Hello everyone, I am Sujoy and I am back with another exciting operation research tutorial for you. Today I will tell you how to solve a 5 plus 5 transportation problem by Modi method. Also I will tell you some tricks to do Modi method quickly. So let's start the video. Our question is below the IBFS given by VAM or Vogel's approximation method. I have separate videos on VAM. You can check them. Now check for optimality and find the optimal transportation cost. So for some basics, this is called the transportation problem and this matrix is called the cost matrix where the individual cell values represent the transportation cost. So here we have 5 origins O1, O2, O3, O4 and O5 and 5 destinations D1, D2, D3, D4 and D5 and the value in small boxes are called the allocation values. So now what is the meaning of transportation cost? That means if we transport one unit of goods from origin 1 to depot 1 or D1 our cost of transportation is 12 units. The unit may be anything like 12 rupees or 12 dollars or 12 euros. But if we transport one unit of goods from origin 1 to destination 2 our cost of transportation reduces to 8 from 12. So what is our objective? Our objective is to allocate goods from 5 origins to 5 destinations in such a manner so that our total transportation cost is minimum. Next, these outside vertical values are called the supply values and these horizontal outside values are called the demand values. That means in origin 1 we have total supply of 6 units of goods. Similarly, in origin 2 we have total supply is of 12 units of goods. And for D, the, for the depot D1, the demand is of 2 units of goods. Similarly, for depot 2, the demand is of 8 units of goods. And the meaning of allocation is that we have allocated 3 units of goods for the cell O1 D2 at the cost of 8 per unit. So for this cell, the total transportation cost will be 3 into 8, 24 units. Remember, to be able to solve a transportation problem, the sum of all demands and sum of all supplies should be equal. So in our case, sum of all demands is 2 plus 8 plus 7 plus 10 plus 4 equals to 31 and sum of all supplies is 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus 10 plus 9 equals to 31. In some transportation problem where the sum of demand is not equal to sum of supply is called an unbalanced transportation problem. There is a special technique for solving unbalanced transportation problem. I have a video on that also. You can check that. Link to that is given in the video description below. And for your kind information, I have already uploaded more than 50 videos on operation research subject covering the transportation problem, assignment problem, linear programming problems or LPPs, game theory, queuing theory, network analysis or project management. So if you want to watch any of my previous videos on operation research, link to all of them is given in the video description below. So let's proceed to the solution. The definition. Definition of the MODI method. So the MODI method or the modified distribution method is an optimization technique used to find the optimal transportation cost. MODI is a short form of modified distribution, MO from modified and DI from distribution, makes MODI MODI. So in MODI method, we modify our existing initial basic feasible solution or IBFS via a series of optimality tests to find the optimal solution. Applying MODI method, so this is our original question, this is the IBFS obtained by the Vogel's approximation method or VAM. So this is the initial basic feasible solution or IBFS and our initial cost or initial total cost is given by 3 into 8 plus 3 into 11 plus 2 into 8 plus 2 into 14 plus 2 into 14 plus 2 into 14 plus 8 into 17 plus 5 into 9 plus 4 into 11 that's equals to 382. Now we will apply the body method. So this is the initial basic feasible solution. Now 
we'll apply the Modi method and we'll check whether we can decrease the total transportation cost from 382 to some extent. So we'll do the Modi method in three steps. Step number one, checking for degeneracy. So our number of allocations is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Total 9 allocations are there. Equals to M plus N minus 1. Where M is the number of rows which is 5. Plus N is number of columns which is also 5. Minus 1. So 5 plus 5 plus 10 minus 1 is 9. So since in our case the number of allocations is equals to M plus N minus 1. So it is a non-degenerate problem. If the number of allocations is not equals to M plus N minus 1, in that case the problem is called a degenerate problem. There is also a special technique for solving degeneracy problem. Step 2. Calculating the opportunity cost or the optimality test. As I mentioned in the definition, in Modi method, we basically do lots of optimality tests on our IBFS to get the optimal solution. So, we will do a series of optimality tests. First, the step 2.1. In step 2.1, we will do UI plus VJ method for all the occupied cells. Occupied cells are the cells which are allocated. Also called the basic cells. So, here our first occupied cell is at O1 D2. That means in row 1, column 2 which has the cell value 8. So that I have written here U1 plus V2 is equals to 8 where the U value represents the row number and V value represents the column number and the right hand side value represents the cell value. Similarly our next allocation is at O1 D3 which is the cell value 11 that is written here U1 plus V3 is equals to 11. And next at O2 D3 cell value 8 u2 plus v3 equals to 8. So similarly do the calculation and write down all ui plus vj values. Next from the series of values we will get the actual values for u and v. So for that first locate the u term or the v term which has maximum number of occurrences. So here as you can see the v3 has maximum occurrences of 3. So here is one V3, here is one V3 and here is one V3. So since V3 has maximum occurrences, if we can make or take the V3 equals to 0, then we can solve the remaining values. So here, first we will take V3 equals to 0 at this position. So if we take the V3 equals to 0, then U4 equals to 14. That I have written here, U4 equals to 14. This is our first value. So I have written 1 next to this. This I have written for you. This is optional. Next, we know u4 equals to 14. So, we will put the value here. So, if, if u4 equals to 14, then b4 equals to 17 minus 14 or 3. So, v4 equals to 3. This is our second value. Next, we will put the value here. If b4 equals to 3 and u3 equals to 14 minus 3 or 11. So u3 equals to 11. This is our third value. Similarly, substitute the values and you will get all the values for all u and v values. You can pause the video here and write it down. Step 2.2 Calculating the opportunity cost for unoccupied cells. Unoccupied cells are those cells where any allocation is not done like these cells. Here, here, here and here and here and so on. For that we will use this formula. Del ij equals to cij minus ui plus vj. So we have calculated all ui and vj values in the previous step. Step 2.1. Now we will use those values to calculate the del ij values. Let us do it. Our first unallocated cell is at O1 D1 which has the cell value 12. So here Cij represents the cell value. So for our first unallocated cell, 
which is the position 1 1 del 1 1 where the first one represents the row number 1 and second one represents the column 1. So for del 1 1 the cell value or CIJ value is 12 minus UI or U1 value is 11 so that is 11 plus V1 value is 3. So we will write CIJ minus UI plus VJ that is 12 minus 11 plus 3 that is equals to minus 2. Our next unallocated cell is at 1 D4 which has the cell value 18 that I have written here del 1 4 or del row 1 column 4 the value is 18 minus u1 which is 11 plus v4 which has the value 3 so 18 minus 11 plus 3 that is 18 minus 14 is 4 next unallocated cell is at row 1 column 5 or del 1 5 row 1 column 5 which has the cell value 11 that I have written here del 1 5 equals to 11 minus u1 value is 11 and v5 value is minus 1 so 11 which is the cell value minus u1 value is 11 and v5 value is minus 1 so that is equals to 11 minus 11 minus 1 or 1 similarly calculate all the opportunity cost for all unoccupied cells so here you can pause the video to write all of them step 2.3 if all del ij values are greater than or equals to 0 the present solution is optimal but if any of the del ij value is negative present solution is not optimal and you need to do the looping and as you can see in our case we have two negative values one at del 1 1 position and another at del 5 1 position and both have the same negative value that is negative 2 1 negative 2 and 1 negative 2 so we need to do the looping and I will continue the looping in my part 2 of the video so this is the end of the part 1 of the video I will continue the calculation in part 2. Part 1 and part 2 will be uploaded simultaneously on YouTube. Link to the part 2 is given in the video description below. So check that out. So friend, that's it for now. How was the video? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you so, please like and share the video. By that you will encourage me to make more quality videos in future. And don't forget to share the video because sharing is caring. So thanks for watching, see you in my next video and still then stay connected by subscribing.